so today is kind of a chatty get ready with me and need to kind of update you on some things that are going to be happening in my life and then the impact of those things on my channel probably through the summer months and so I figured I needed to do some extra filming today and so I would just get ready for filming and uh, talk to you guys about life updates and things like that. So all that to say, the products that I'm using I will link down below if you are curious about any of them and I will try and remember to link the brushes as well. But the point of today's video is less about the makeup and more about what's going on with my life and how it's going to impact my channel and you guys. So. You know, I think the most important thing to call out right away is that we are going to be moving. Um, we are going to be leaving Columbus, which has been our home for, gosh, I've lived here since 2001. I think my husband's been here a few years, um, actually longer than even me. Columbus has been an amazing city. I freaking love Columbus. It is, I think, it's funny, I meet people traveling and, you know, as you do, uh, where do you live kinds of questions tend to come up um, very quickly or very early on. And I always say, oh, I'm, I'm from Columbus. And almost immediately the reaction I get is like, oh my gosh, I've lived in Columbus or I visited there or it's amazing to me how many people have lived in the city um, and how much uh, and how much people really like it. Um, we we love it. We It's been a growing, vibrant city. It's um, it's just filled with really great people. I love the shopping. I love that it's a foodie town. I love the zoo. I mean, it, anyway, I just, I've put down roots here. It's definitely the longest um, I've ever lived in one place, either as a child or as an adult. So um, we are going to be moving to St. Louis. And this has been a little while coming at this point. I've mentioned before on my channel that I work for, I work in the pet industry and my dad is actually a PhD board certified nutritionist, uh, pet nutritionist, and he's board certified on the human side as well. He's also a board certified um, food scientist. So he understands the science and the nutrition of building food products. Um, specifically, we focused our business on pet products. And so I joined his business. Um, I'd worked in corporate America for a long time, 11 years, grown up the ranks, um, got into some pretty big jobs and with big roles and just realized that I was I was passionate about growing some a business myself versus you know growing somebody else's big business. And for as much as I've learned in my career, um, I was ready to tackle growing something for myself. And so I left and joined my dad's company, which had been in existence for a, a little while, um, probably about six or seven years before I joined. Um, that business is based in St. Louis, and St. Louis. Um, is kind of a big headquarters for a whole bunch of the pet industry. Both brands are there. You've got um, ingredient companies there. You've got manufacturers there. I mean, St. Louis is just kind of, I don't know, the place. And so, you know, as I've been thinking about, you know, growing our business and as our business has been growing, I've, I've just realized that uh, we needed to potentially consolidate where we were. Not to say I can't work remotely, I've worked remotely for seven years, but our business is growing and you know, my dad is gonna be in it for a while still. I mean, he's showing no, he does not, um, he shows no signs of quitting, I guess, or wanting to like do any sort of retirement. That's just not his MO. But at the same time, I wanna make sure that the business is around and kicking, you know, 40 years from now. What if my stepdaughter wanted to get involved in the pet industry? What if my niece was interested in pet and so on and so forth? Like I didn't want to see this business my dad had built go away. And so you have to start being planful, not like something's going to happen tomorrow, but you know, thinking about what does the next 10 years look like? What does the next 20 years look like? What are things that I need to be thinking about in order to do that? And we're getting to the point now where the business is growing and we're probably going to add two or three people this year, which is awesome as a small business. That's 
amazing when you can say you're gonna bring in new jobs and create new jobs. That's awesome. I'm super excited about that. But what I realized is that in order to do some of those strategic things that we need to do, it's going to be a lot easier if I am living where the business is based. If I'm ultimately going to take over this business someday and run this business someday, I need to be where it is. And we thought, my husband and I thought long and hard about, well, maybe we just, you know, it's in, based in St. Louis while your dad wants to be kind of running it full time, but then we move it to Columbus. And the more, the more we thought about it, the more we realized that the, the workforce, the talent for the pet industry, it's not here in Columbus. And I would have to be relocating in talent to make it work versus um, this sort of St. Louis, Kansas City area, which is just absolutely full of amazingly talented people in the pet industry. And so it's, it's a it's a function of like, put your business where the talent pool is and is easy to find great people, right? Um, so my husband and I talked about this for quite a long time and we actually um, made the decision, we pulled the trigger in November of last year. And so um, we did so by putting down money on a empty lot to build a house. Um, St. Louis is similar to Columbus in the sense that like uh, it's had a lot of growth and there's not as many houses out there as there are people looking to buy them. So it's definitely a seller's market out there right now, not a lot of inventory. And as we started to kind of browse around on the houses out there, we weren't finding a ton that we were super passionate about. Um, we built our house here in Columbus, uh, be six years in September um, is how long we've been in this house. And we loved the process. Like it was a blast. I loved picking out the details and like, I can visually see the house. I could see the house being built in my mind and how the rooms would look based on the things that I was picking. Like I could just see it coming together in my mind. And I loved this house and I loved the process. Both my husband and I loved the build process. And so we just talked about it. And although we realized that we were adding a layer of complexity into a move, we did decide to, um, we decided to build. So we put down the money on a lot and started working with a builder towards the end of last year. And then we kind of waited for everything to solidify in terms of like, just the details that you have to figure out, the finances to you know build and um, you know the permits to get pulled, and, and once we kind of had everything solidified and like the details were ticked and tied, we sat down and talked with my stepdaughter. Um, she currently lives a little more than two hours away from us um, in Cincinnati, and we're in Columbus, which is a little more from our house to her house is like. I don't know, like two hours and 10 minutes, two hours, 15 minutes, depending on traffic. And sometimes it's longer than that. So she's close, but she's not like around the corner close. Um, and so we've kind of brainstormed and um, talked with her about how we're gonna manage things. It's about a five hour drive from Cincinnati to um, St. Louis. And so that's doable, but we're also going to, she's old enough, she'll be 16 next year. Um, we will probably put her on um, some flights out um, to see us on a regular basis. Her school, you know, it'll be interesting. School next year will be interesting in general. We're gonna have to see how that actually materializes. But assuming we get back to a normal school type environment, she's going to, um, uh, she has a lot of three and four day weekends, like every single month, there's almost two. Um, and so our plan is to, for those longer weekends, we'll just fly her out you know, she'll get out of school, we'll fly her out that night on a direct flight, and she'll stay with us all weekend for three or four days, whatever it ends up being, and then we'll fly her back. So from her perspective, it's not necessarily gonna change a ton, it's really just going to be, hey, I'm getting on an airplane for 30 minutes as opposed to getting in a car for two hours to drive um, up to see us. And, and we hope that the impact feels that minimal to her. But, you know, outside of the business side of things, um, and recognizing that it's just going to be beneficial for us to be out there, um, especially as, you know, the business is growing. Um, my parents are, you know, they're, they're both healthy, but they're both getting older. And I kind of recognize that like, I want to be out there 
Um, if something were to happen in the future, I don't want to be eight hours away. I want to be able to be right around the corner um, from my parents. And um, Ross's parents are both um, uh, deceased. They, they were when we got married even. Um, and so we're not dividing interests or we're not dividing places between where his parents are versus mine and trying to think about how do we consolidate everybody's parents into one place. Um, and my parents are pretty entrenched in St. Louis. I was technically born in St. Louis. Um, we lived there until I was like nine and then we moved to Kansas and then we moved to Alabama and then I uh, moved to Ohio for school, which is how I landed here in Columbus. Um, and Anyway, all that to say my parents missed St. Louis and ended up moving back after I was, you know, long gone living on my own as an adult kind of thing. Um, and they love it there. And so I just felt like, you know, getting them to move to a place that's like colder, wetter, rainier Ohio at Columbus than St. Louis, which is actually um, quite a bit further south and warmer in the wintertime than Ohio they're not going to want to go someplace colder as they get older, um, business stuff aside. And then, um, there is a good chance that I may have, um, other siblings interested in moving to, um, St. Louis as well. That's still kind of up in the air, but regardless, it just started to make sense for us to, to be there for family reasons, for business reasons, um, etc. And so, we have, like I mentioned, we are building, which makes our move date a little fuzzy because building is very dependent on weather, especially early on. And until you have a roof over your head, it, things can slow down. And then with the virus um, and kind of the whole closures and situations, you know, they've been approaching building differently and they've been doing smaller crews that are more spread out. Um, and they've been doing um, specialized crews only. So whereas before you might've had two contractors in there doing two different kinds of things on the house, they're only doing one thing right now. So the process is a little, uh, it's moving, but it's still a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not slow, but it, it's, it, it's, un, it's a little unpredictable right now. That's probably the best word to use. So we are um, in the middle of the build process right now. We have, as I'm filming this today, and I don't know when this video is going up. Um, it's May 2nd when I am filming this, um, but uh, we have a foundation poured and we have a little bit of framing at what will our, be our basement. And then they put the, like, the floor down for the main floor. Um, and then from what our project manager said next week, they're going to start actually the framing of the main floor. And once we have the framing done and the kind of the roof in before they go into drywall, we will definitely have a better sense for when the move is, but we are guessing move at some point in July or early August. And so we have a lot to do. This is my first adult interstate move. Um, we have a house, we have four animals, uh, we both work from home, so our offices are all here and all of our office computers and printers and files are all here. And so uh, the whole sell your house and put it on the market and potentially be homeless thing is keeping me up at night a little bit. Uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see how houses sell. So our plan at this point is to probably put our house up for market sometime in early June. And so I have kind of a laundry list of things as you do to put your house up for market walls that you need to paint that you've been ignoring little tiny things that have issues that you want to fix prior to putting on the market. And then of course, because that's just what happens, we of course had um, a leak in our basement coming from our foundation that ended up having a crack in it. So we ended up having to like tear into a wall in our basement and they did this whole huge project in order to get our basement fixed. So of course, you know, water damage right before you go to put your house on the market, super fun. Um, we've gotten, or part of the way through getting all of that fixed. Um, so anyway, all that to say, it's gonna be disruptive for my channel. Like there's there's no two ways about it. Like 
I am going to have periods of time where my makeup is boxed or um, I am, you know, we're, we're moving into a new house and everything is chaos and I'm going to be prioritizing on packing my kitchen versus filming new videos and, and things like that. And, you know, the exact time frames in terms of how that is going to unfold um, is still a little TBD. I am a planner by nature and so, I, what I'm wanting to do right now is to like outline all the things that need to happen and like, okay, I'm moving into the house on this date, back myself up from there. And you know, I don't have a lot of those details yet. Um, so it's kind of difficult to plan what's going to happen. And so I am learning to kind of tackle what I can with what I know in the moment and be flexible around the things that are going to have to evolve through this whole process. And this is a, not something I do naturally. Let's just leave it there. So I'm not somebody who's stressing out and like freaking out cause I can't have my lists, but it's definitely, it's against my grain in terms of how I would approach a major life change or a major project, I guess is the best way to say it. So I, have done a bunch of pre-filming. Uh, you may have heard me reference a few times that I filmed a bunch of declutters. Um, I did, I've pretty much decluttered and gone through every drawer in my makeup collection. And I'm kind of saving that footage right now because A, they're easy to edit. Um, it's, I don't have a lot of cutaway shots. It's really me just editing the footage and slicing out boring parts or parts where I'm not talking, etc. So I need, I have a good amount of that declutter footage that I will be using during those time frames where I can't be filming. And I am hopeful that we can negotiate with whoever buys our house that we can stay in until our new house is like ready to, we're ready to actually move into it uh, in St. Louis. And then, you know, maybe we're just like a day or two in a hotel. Um, our realtor is hopeful that we can negotiate something like that as well. Um, and we're gonna be very upfront with the seller in terms of, or rather the buyer in terms of like, hey, here's what we're hoping to have happen. And hopefully we can like come up with a solution that works for them buying our house and also for us not to be homeless for a while because, you know, I've got to think about where am I going to live for a, a month I'm making this up with a dog with two dogs and two cats and two humans right like there are hotels that allow you to have like two pets in a room but I've never found a hotel that allows four and I can't find an apartment complex that has you know short-term one month leases which I think is all we're going to end up needing so anyway all that to say I am, um, those are the details that are keeping me up at night. Well, keeping me up at night is not maybe the right thing. I, I actually, when I fall asleep, I sleep hardcore, but I do, um, those are the things that I am thinking about right now because I just don't know the answer and I don't know how to plan for those. I, I, um, I just have to have lots of contingencies in my head. So I'm filming this on Saturday. On Monday, we have somebody coming to fix um, the final details of the basement, redo the drywall and all that jazz, and then come in and do some of the painting and things um, inside of the house. Um, I, this is probably my last weekend filming with this really pretty charcoal background wall because um, the bedroom that I'm in here, I'm gonna try and stage it less as a cluttery filming room um, and more as a like a, an office slash craft room or something along those lines. So I'm gonna be packing up my lights. The walls are gonna all get painted one color that matches the rest of the house. Um, and so I think I probably have a few more weekends where I can like do bulk filming. I've been doing a lot of filming on the weekends right now. Um, but like this is definitely the last weekend you will have. I will have my pretty gray wall. I will miss you. And I will probably be painting you back in the new house as well. So in terms of content, um, there will probably be periods where I can't film some of my normal series. So shop my stash is going to be very impossible because I won't have my stash to shop for probably a two month time frame. Um, I, so I've been brainstorming content that I can be filming ahead of time. Things like, okay, what makeup am I taking with me when I move, right? So what's not getting packed up? What's going to stay with me um, during the move process? I can film a video like that. I am also exploring 
well, not exploring, I'm going to do it. Um, a little bit of moving vlogging. I am not a vlogger by nature. I really don't have any desire to be a vlogger. My plan right now is to vlog this moving process. And so I have been doing it on my phone and just kind of taking you guys along through the process of like getting our house prepped to go on the market and um, getting things prepped and decluttered and where we are now versus what the house looks like when it's all sh you know fancy schmancy ready to get um, photos taken for realtor pictures and and then things like packing up my makeup and um, going through and getting all of that organized for move and you know how am I going to approach that I'm not entirely sure yet and just the whole moving process and then also kind of the build process of okay here are the choices we're making okay here's some of the stuff that's happened this week and so I'm filming these now knowing that I will probably be putting out like content in like two week chunks. So things that have already happened, I will put out probably starting in the month of, I'm gonna guess June or probably in the month of June would be when I started and we'll probably cover like two week time frames, So you guys can kind of see um, not only the process of what an interstate move looks like as an adult with a full house of crap and four animals, um, but also the selling process and the building process of the new house and kind of the choices we're making and what's happening from a construction standpoint. I thought that might be kind of cool if you've never built a house before. What does that look like? Um, and kind of, you know, then film the moving process, right? Here's our, here's all the stuff exiting our house and here's our empty house someday. Whew, it's gonna make me sad. Um, I've already cried so many times. I'm excited about this move, but I'm also like super sad. I've cried, I can't even tell you how many times with the thought of like leaving our friends and leaving the city and leaving this house. And all right, I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna cry again. Um, so I'm really, I'm, I'm excited and I'm sad um, all at the same time. This whole thing is just, has me all kinds of torn. Um, but anyway, I, I thought it would be fun. I, I'm, uh, I, I tend to watch mostly beauty content here uh, with a few exceptions. I follow some booktubers that are, and a few other channels, but like whenever anyone I follow has done a moving vlog, I'm like, I'm in, like I am, I'm totally fascinated by the whole process and like when somebody had rebuilt, bought a house and were remodeling it, uh, Lily Pebbles, I was like completely in on every vlog she put out. So anyway, I, I don't know, I thought that would be a fun way for me to continue to get out content to you guys during a very hectic time because a lot of that is just going to be um, some things that I can film on my iPhone and include some footage and some pictures and things like that. So that, my plan is kind of my pre-filmed content, my, um, yeah, my pre-filmed content, my declutter content, and then some of this vlogging to keep things coming up on my channel um, while this whole thing is unfolding and while there may be times where I can't film because my house is staged for a showing at any random point in time and I can't have, you know, all the cords and lights in this room be the mess that it is in order to sh sell the house, right? And so there's gonna be a period of time while I'm selling, while I'm packing, while we're moving, while I'm unpacking, where filming is gonna be pretty darn impossible with the exception of potentially keeping you guys up to date on what's going on on my phone. Um, I am really excited about the house we're building it is beautiful. I'm, it's funny, I love our house now, but there's a few things that I felt like I had to, if you've ever bought a house or even, even picking out a rental apartment um, or condo, you know there's just, there's compromises you make, right? Um, you love everything about the house, but I'm gonna compromise on this because it's not, um, this is more important than this, right? It's, it's the whole process of buying or building anything. Um, or renting anything, you make compromises on things, right? Um, and so there's some things that, about our house that I compromised on because we just couldn't make it, this house that we built didn't have those options. And I, there are some of them that I've been like totally fine, haven't missed at all. And then there's been a few where I'm like, gosh, I really wish we had this. Um, one was a slightly bigger garage than we have right now because between, you know, our mowers and my husband's golf stuff and our trash cans and our tools and then the cars, like it just, 
there's no room to, it's, it's very compact and tight. And I would all, I've always wanted a garage with like a little bit of a bump out space or something. Like I know the first world problems here, but anyway, all that to say, I'm really excited about the floor plan we picked. I'm really happy about the builder. Picking a builder was interesting because, you know, in here in Columbus, I could tell you which builders have good reputations, which builders um, my friends have built with and have loved every minute, which builders have, do I know someone who they've had not a great experience with? And I didn't know anything about that in St. Louis. We did a bunch of research before we signed out the dotted line. And then I've gotten one confirmation after another from, you know, from everyone, from Uber drivers, from a guy who used to work in the construction industry to, um, you know, my, one of my mom's best friend's husbands who used to be in the construction industry going, oh yeah, that's a good builder. Oh yeah, that's a good builder. Like everyone who it's come up with um, in terms of who we're building, we've gotten this like, oh yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're great. They're great. They're going to love them. So I am feeling like we did or we made the right choice in terms of the builder and all that jazz. I'm also super excited that we are gonna have a walkout basement. We have a basement now, but it's in ground. Most basements in Columbus are in ground. We just don't have enough um, elevation changes in most parts of the city that allow for a walkout basement. That's, that's very different in St. Louis. St. Louis is more like Cincinnati in terms of its um, just topography. I need my eyelash colors. So I, I feel like um, we are going to really enjoy having a basement that has windows and a basement that has a sliding door um, to go outside to a patio. I'm very excited about that. Um, and having that as an option on our lot. Um, our lot is like, I can't, it's really tough. We visited, we were able to visit our lot in the early part of the year and we had a plot map. So they give you kind of, here's your lot, here's how your house is gonna sit on your lot kind of thing. And so we were able to kind of walk around the lot and try and guess like, okay, our house is gonna start here and it's gonna, the back of the house is gonna be here. Um, we're in kind of a very funky shaped lot though. Um, I like our lot, but it's a very funky shape and it's gonna have a weird, it's gonna have a big front yard is what it's looking like, but it's kind of a, it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, it's a normal lot and then all of a sudden it has this like bulbous part, that's the wrong word, it sounds horrible, but like it has a peninsula almost off to the side that has, um, that's gonna be, I don't know, it's an odd shaped front yard. We're just gonna leave it like there. I'm struggling for words, uh, but I'm kind of excited to see the house now that the foundation's in and kind of see, okay, oh, this is where our driveway is actually going to be. And oh, okay, that's how much of our yard is actually left now that they've dug the foundation. And, you know, unfortunately we had planned on going out to St. Louis at least once a month, if not twice a month to just check in with the build process and meet with different um, subcontractors and so on and so forth. And thankfully we got most of the design choices done in December and then a little bit in early January. Otherwise this would have been incredibly difficult to do, but I haven't been able to see anything. And when we built this house, I was over here like, oh, I was over here every day, let's be clear, just to walk around, see what happened. It was to the point where I could always spot all of the work that they had done um, in any one day. And so by the time we moved in, the house didn't feel like a, it didn't feel like a house I'd never lived in or it didn't feel foreign to me. By the time we moved into this house, I knew it like the back of my hand. I'd been in here so many times. I had, you know, I had already stood in the kitchen and like could see myself cooking meals and I'd figured out what drawer I wanted the silverware in before I'd ever moved in, all that stuff. Um, because it was the first house I'd ever built and it was just a fun process and I loved every second of it and I loved being over here watching it get built. And so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little disconnected from the new house. Um, our project manager has been great. 
He's been sending us photos um, all the time. He checks in with me at least once a week to let me know what they've been working on, what they, what progress they've made, so on and so forth, keeping me posted on what the next, what he anticipates the next couple of weeks looking like. like he's been great, um, but I haven't been to the lot or seen anything um, for the house at all at this point. All I've seen is an empty lot and then photos coming in. Um, my parents are keeping us up to date with pictures. Um, they're probably going to actually meet up with our project manager next week once the first floor is framed and um, try and FaceTime us and talk to things, um, talk us through everything they're seeing. And so in that respect, I'm, you know, doing, doing the mostest from a distance, but I'm Part of what I loved the build process was being what felt like I was being part of the build process, and that's you know obviously not happening right now, both because of a distance thing, which I knew was going to be an issue just in general, and then obviously um, with the whole work from home thing. I'm hoping that the builder, so we have a meeting that is supposed to happen. They call it a pre-drywall meeting. And so it's basically once all the framing's done, your roof's on, your windows are on, your plumbing's in, your HVAC is in, your electricity's in. So everything's done, everything up until drywall, basically. So they call it your pre-drywall meeting, and it's kind of your last chance to see everything and how everything's gonna work, and here's where all your light sockets are, and here's you know where your sinks are gonna be, and blah, 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 before, and make sure everything is like the way you picked it out and the way you've discussed it prior to then putting on a whole bunch of drywall and obviously not being able to see those things anymore. And so um, I'm just mixing two blush colors together here, two cream blush colors together. So anyway, um, that meeting will happen, or it would normally happen, oh gosh, I'm gonna guess it's gonna happen it, they're gonna be ready to have that meeting rather sometime, I'm gonna guess in early to mid June. So I am hoping that we can go out there for that. If we've already talked with our project manager and he's like, listen, if we can't, we'll do a FaceTime call. I'll, you know, I'll FaceTime you on my iPhone. I'll walk you through everything. I'll show you everything. You know, there's, we, we can keep this moving even at a distance. And I really appreciate him, you know, thinking outside the box on all of those things. But at the same time, the thought of like, not being part of this building process and not seeing everything that's happening and not having a chance to potentially walk our house until, you know, much later on or potentially until we need to move in is definitely, um, <laughs> it's making me a little sad. Um, thankfully right now the housing market in Columbus is good. And so our realtor is not anticipating any issues selling our house. Um, in fact, houses even lately, even through the virus, are selling at more than list price because there's just not enough inventory. And there's, you know, even apparently in the midst of a pandemic, there is a need to potentially move. So he doesn't anticipate any issues selling our house. So that's encouraging, but it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a lot to think about juggling all of the things with a very busy job that is just getting busier. Um, I've been laughing that like pet food is like one degree of separation away from um, toilet paper in terms of like, it's definitely a necessary product and people are buying lots and lots of pet food. If anything, it, people may be stocking up a little bit now and we may see a little bit of a slowdown later on. But at the same time, I've also been hearing that People are buying shelter, or buying shelter dogs, what the heck? They are adopting shelter dogs, and so shelters are empty, and so adoption's on the rise, and so a lot more people are looking for supplies and things for brand new pets that they're bringing home, which is, that's absolutely amazing. So my job is busy. I'm trying to think through, you know, um, keeping my channel, doing all the things that I wanna do for it, because this is something I am very passionate about doing, and I would, so miss if I just had to stop this for months on end. Like it, it, it would be, that would be really hard. I, I'm, I'm doing everything in my power to not do it, or not do that rather. Um, let me do some lipstick real fast. All right, so that is makeup. For, oh, actually, you know what? 
and a little setting spray. Actually warm outside today and I'm feeling the warmth in this room right now. So hopefully I don't look like I'm super duper flushed. Um, all right, so that is makeup done. Um, I'm gonna do my best to keep you guys up to, date it, up to date on everything. If you wanna keep a closer tab on things, definitely follow me on Instagram. I will be posting more and more things on stories to kind of keep you guys connected into what's going on. I do intend to, like I said, do more of the moving vlog type stuff um, intermixed with still beauty content, uh, probably at some point in June would be my guess, and then um, through the move process. So hopefully that's interesting to um, some of you guys. I will also put some updates out on the community tab here for those of you who aren't out on Instagram, but I will definitely be probably leveraging Instagram and Instagram stories specifically to kind of keep you up to date with what's going on um, and just what you can anticipate from my channel, but I am, like I said, excited for this, excited for um, my new filming space. I'm, I think it's gonna work out really well. I'm excited for our house. I'm excited for the build process. I'm excited to be near my parents, um, closer to Ross's family in Iowa, closer to um, some of my other siblings. And then I'm heartbroken to be leaving my friends and I'm heartbroken to be leaving the city and I'm heartbroken to leave this house and all of those things. So a mixed bag of emotions right now, but um, wanted to give you guys this update so you knew what to anticipate from my channel and um, just kind of what the next coming months will look like in terms of content. So that is all I had planned. I think this is probably a long rambly video. Um, hopefully it was somewhat interesting to you. And here is the final look, if anyone cares. Um, and I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I will look forward to chatting with you down in the comments. Bye.